Next fly we're going to do is called a Kispiox Zonker. It's a fly that I've used a lot down in Tierra del, Fu Tierra del Fuego where I guide. Uh, see where I'm brown trout on the Rio Grande and Rio Menendez rivers. The um, name obviously comes from the Kispiox River and the Skeena drainage in British Columbia. I've done a lot of fishing in the past. Uh, one thing that struck me while I was up there, a lot of the guides use uh, black on purple or black on blue. And I took that idea to create a zonker um, that I could use in Tierra del Fuego. Uh, about 50% of the fish we catch down there are caught within the last two hours of the day as darkness is approaching and as it gets dark. And your dark flies at this time of day work exceptionally well. And that's what this is. Once again, I'm going to use uh, the Mustad Saltwater Hook 34011. And it's a one knot hook, pretty big hook. Works very well for this fly. Get that into the vise. And we're going to use a dumbbell eye, just a plain silver dumbbell. So I'll get the thread connected to the hook first. And you will notice this is an extremely easy fly to tie. The dumbbells will be, the dumbbell will be put underneath the hook so that it rides hook down. And you just do a set of figure eights to get that on. That's how I do it. And that should be set there pretty decent. I'm going to wrap this all the way back to the bend of the hook. And we're going to use black magnum strips of bunny hair for the... Uh, for the top of this fly, basically. This will be the overbody. Measuring out the length, that's going to be just about right, what we're looking at right there. So I'll separate that hair out so we're not going to tie down too much of that. And that will be tied on right in that vicinity there. This one's going to be a short tail. I've had the tails as long as this before. And uh, people always ask me, well, are you worried about short strikes? And not so much, certainly with brown trout, um, with taimen that I've used this for in uh, Mongolia, as well as cutthroat. All three of those, pretty predatorial fish. And I'm becoming more and more convinced that a lot of these strikes are coming from the side. Uh, you know, they're very, very uh, tenacious fish, very territorial, and uh, just aggressive. They're predators. And I think most of those strikes are coming from the side. So I don't have too much of a problem with short strikes at all. Wrap the thread forward of that bunny hair. For the body, what we're going to use is called... I it's Basically, it's called ice braid. It's a uh, type of ice chenille, and we uh, use this. I get this from uh, from Wapsi, and uh, I like it because it has kind of a molted look to it, if you can see. It's, it's black uh, interspersed with a large amount of purple, and uh, that's what we're going to use as the body. So I'll give that a clip real fast. Let me give myself a bit more body there. This doesn't separate out too well like uh, um, chenille does. So you don't want to get too much of a bulk. So I'm going to tie it on very, very close to the tip. So I don't want to, again, form too much of a bulk here at the back of the body. So that's now on. I'm going to take this thread forward to just about just in front of the eye there. Now we roll the body material forward, just uh, palmering it basically like you would hackle. This is anything, this is very, very similar to what you do with a, with a woolly bugger. 
And what I tend to do is bring it forward like so, and then stop there and push it back. And that compresses the body a bit more. Um, around here, we call it packing. Um, the Radfords and the Edsels of uh, the South Fork of the Snake River created really good wet flies that were very durable, stayed together pretty well. And they, that stayed together pretty well because they packed this material. That forms a very, very hard, solid body. That's where I'm going to end the body, right there. Uno mas. Give that a clip. Now I'm going to wrap this right on forward. And right here, I'm going to tie in flank material called angel hair. And uh, you can also get this from, uh, from Wopsy as well. And I'm just going to tie on a few strands on each side of the fly. And this will act somewhat as a lateral line, give it a little bit of flash. You don't need much. You're going to have a lot of flash already with this body. back and I'm going to tie it again on just on the other side of the eye. And that'll help it lay, instead of riding on top, it'll lay lower and alongside the flank. I'm going to come forward again and get the other side. You'll notice this pulls off of here very, very easily. I'm just going to give that a yank, boom, and it comes off just very, very easy. You don't need to really do too much by way of cutting. A little bit too much compared to what I wanted to do. And something like that will probably work. And that material can get in your way, of course. And then I bring it, that thread, just the other side of the eye again, and that's going to help it lay along the flank, create that lateral line. I bring that forward to the eye of the hook. Now you see I have two pieces just like that, and I'm going to trim this after I finish up the, the fly. Now I'm going to shave the top piece of this bunny strip. Get that nice and flat. Pull that forward. I'm going to crimp it even more now because we got a lot of excess there. And something like that should work for us. Now, one thing I do here is I'm going to squeeze it in like that. That way, you don't have the underside of the bunny hair rolling up, it'll stay kind of rolled down create a little bit nicer of an, of an effect. Get the angel hair out of the way. That's pretty secure, and I'm going to trim that. And now I'm just going to form the nose right there with a lot of thread. Take a peek at the other side. That looks pretty decent. Now you can whip finish this or half hitch it, whatever you wish. Trim that, and I caught some angel hair here, so I'll trim that as well. And now I trim the angel hair on each side, so it's not any longer than the tail. I'm going to actually 
grab this side first, bring it right about down to there. Now I'm going to take a peek at the other side and trim that there. And that is your Kispiak zonker. And you're able to lacquer that head if you wish and make it begin to look a little bit more like the head on a salmon fly or a steelhead fly. Um, or you can leave it like that. You can also form that tail by just trimming it in an angle or you can leave it like this. I've had no problem just leaving that uh, that fly like that. And uh, again, good for uh, good for Timon, good for, for pike, good for Lenok in Central Asia, but I've never really used it for steelhead.